From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. The dead of summer is usually a relatively quiet time in Washington, but in this midterm election year, things are busy inside the Beltway, especially with Congress back from its 4th of July recess. Here to talk with, many of the issue, talk with us about many of the issues facing the nation is Tennessee 6th District Congressman John Rose. Congressman, it's good to see you again. It's great to have you in the studio for the first time, and welcome back to Inside Politics. Thank you, Pat. Thanks for having me on Inside Politics today. One of the biggest news stories and controversies this summer has been the Supreme Court decision overturning nearly a half-century old Roe v. Wade decision that granted the right to abortion under the Constitution. As a pro-life supporter and a member of the pro-life House Caucus, uh, you must have rejoiced when that ruling came down. I did, uh, really at two levels. So as a pro-life, uh, a staunchly pro-life person, obviously I rejoice for the for the decision in terms of the chance for life that this will give to millions of, of unborn babies. But, but secondly, as an attorney and a believer in the rule of law, I rejoice because I think this is the right decision under the Constitution, and I think the court, while it took 49 years to get to the Dobbs decision, I think they righted a wrong in terms of the interpretation of the Constitution. President Joe Biden, the Democrats in Congress are seeking to, to codify the Roe v. Wade abortion rights back into federal law. Uh, the House approved such a measure last week, uh, but I believe you and all the Republican members of our delegation in Tennessee voted against it. That's right, and I think I think you're going to see a number of legislative uh, steps taken in the days, years ahead uh, as we sort through this. Obviously, the development of the law in this area has been cut short for 49 years by the presence of the Roe decision, and so there's a lot of uh, uncharted territory that has to be worked out. There are two other bills the House passed this week. I believe you voted against both of them. One would basically repeal the Defense of Marriage Act and also uh, set in federal recognition of same-sex and interracial marriages nationwide. Now, this comes out of Judge Clarence Thomas in his in his opinion uh, on the uh, abortion matter. He said the court also made a mistake in allowing same-sex marriage. Uh, both these bills, the, this particular bill got 47 Republicans in the House to vote for it. Does it have a chance to pass the Senate, whereas these others might not? Well, I don't know, but I don't think so. Um, you, you know, again, these are questions that I think should be left to the states to decide, and uh, of course the, con uh, the, the Supreme Court has ruled. I think uh, Justice Thomas is addressing the underpinnings of the Roe decision, which are also the underpinnings of these other decisions, and 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 I again, uh, looking at the Constitution, think that that uh, uh, Justice Thomas is pre presaging what might happen as a uh, more reasoned approach to the Constitution happens in going forward. Same thing. The House passed a bill that would put into federal law uh, approval of uh, contraceptive uh, rights, uh, the right to birth control pills. I guess the rights to condoms. Uh, you voted against the bill. Do you think those things should be made illegal? Do you agree with Justice Thomas? Because he mentioned that in his decision. Too. Well, I don't think he's necessarily saying they should be made illegal. I think he's he's questioning the underpinnings of the decisions uh, that the court has made historically. Uh, I think I think that contraceptives should be available. Unfortunately, the bills that came before Congress or the bill that came before Congress on, on that in that regard did not go through regular order. There were serious questions about the particular provisions, and I think so. You know what? We, what I've learned in my three and a half years in Congress is that mistakes get made when you don't take the time to go through the normal and regular order. Now, this Dobbs decision in the High Court about abortion turns over abortion regulations to the states. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence, former Vice President Mike Pence, now wants Congress to pass nationwide a ban on abortion. Right now, if it goes to the states, some are allowing it, some are not. Uh, are you ready to support a nationwide ban on abortion? Well, Pat, I'm staunchly pro-life, believe that life begins at conception, and so if such a bill came to the House floor, I would vote for it and support it. What about prosecuting doctors who continue to, to do abortions? Would you like to see that prosecuted with a federal law, or would you prefer that be done on a state-by-state -state basis, including in Tennessee? You know, historically, criminal law has been the province of the states, and, and I think that's where it belongs. I'm a, I believe in the principles of federalism, and so I think that we let the states make those decisions. And if they decided they were going to prosecute Execute doctors, you'd be okay about that? Well, I think that decision's been made in Tennessee, and the legislature uh, has made such a decision, and, and I think that law takes effect on Sunday. So I think under it, uh, doctors can be prosecuted. What about prosecuting women who seek abortion, particularly those who might go to another state? They may live in Tennessee, but go to another state to do that. It, would you like I, to see I that? I don't think we should go there. I, I think there are other ways that to deal with those issues, and so I don't think we should criminalize the behavior of women in this area. Uh, a lot of abortions now are not 
not done surgically, they're done med uh, med medically. Um, what would you do about the abortion pills that are out there that people can take? Uh, do you want to see those banned? Again, you're going to get into interstate commerce because they're going to go through the mail and they may be ordered from another state or even from another country. Sure. So, you know, I think we have to step back and look at this uh, realistically. These pills are dangerous. They should, uh, uh, you know, of course, I don't believe they should be used to effectuate abortions uh, broadly. And, and, uh, and so I think, though, we should look at these questions in terms of the safety of their use. And I think it's a mistake to let something that has so many potential side effects be administered without the care of a physician. Um, you seem to say, you said this earlier, I believe, that some might have thought that we'd get some clarity about the abortion issue when the court ruled. But it looks like we're going to have still more controversy and still more legislation on both sides, not only in Congress, but in states all across the country. Well, again, I think the, the framers of the Constitution left this question to the people. I think that's where it belongs. Uh, democracy can be messy, so I think the people get to decide these questions. That's where it should have been all along. I think we'd be in a much different place in terms of the development of the law over the last 49 years had Roe not been the law of the land. And so, yes, I think there is going to be a period of upheaval. Uh, abortion was not even an issue or talked about in, in, in public matters uh, when the Constitution was drafted in 1790. So all our rights in the Constitution should be things that are in the Constitution from 1790 and nothing else? I think, I th well, of course, there's an opportunity to amend the Constitution. It's a, it's a steep hill to climb. But I think abortion did exist at that time, and the, and the uh, framers left many of these questions to the states. They considered them to be laboratories for democracy, and, and so I think that's the appropriate way to approach this. So your thought would be if somebody, if we wanted to go back to a Roe v. Wade standard, the only way to do that is not by federal law, or it would be have to be, have to be done by a federal constitutional amendment. I think so, and I, I think you see a lot of legal scholars debating: uh, is there a way to 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 get to that without changing the wording of the Constitution? But I think it would require an amendment. Congressman John Rowe, the Sixth District of Tennessee, is our guest. Back to continue our conversation with the Congressman after this break.